the transcendent energy of a life trapped on earth. A ghost is a sorrowful yet frightening creature, doomed to walk the mortal world for all eternity, seeking their solace or revenge. Throughout history, we have been obsessed with our own mortality, wondering what awaits us after we shrug off our earthly bonds. For some, oblivion. For others, paradise. But for a few, their spirits remain here on Earth, becoming a ghost. The supernatural creature is usually depicted as a translucent entity, resembling the form of the body it once inhabited. However, there do exist variations of this creature that are completely decoherent of their original form, usually taking the shape of a glowing sphere or nebulous mist. There are some examples of the ghost that sees it as a robed figure wandering cemeteries, wholly unlike the more common depictions. The ghost itself is usually a benign creature, acting out various aspects of the life it once had, while flitting in and out of existence. But there are some ghosts that retain a semblance of thought and agency, and are able to affect the world around them to some degree, sometimes to assist the living, and other times to harm them. The reason for these differences of intent among ghosts is usually attributed to the cause for their death. Those ghosts who are helpful are usually assumed to have been created to complete some task which on their death remains unfulfilled while those who are malicious in their conduct are assumed to have been rendered as some form of punishment or are malicious as to defend some area or precious object. It is from this difference in creation and purpose that we distinguish various ghosts from one another. Initially, the term ghost is given to those spirits who are no more than an etheric impression on reality. The poltergeist is another form of ghost that usually inhabits its former residence, pranking and even attacking the new inhabitants. The Wraith is by far the most diverse term, describing many subclasses of ghosts that have both agency and influence in the physical world. Usually violent, these creatures are more commonly depicted in cemeteries and battlefields. At last, the term spirit is more commonly reserved for those ghosts that are benevolent or generally helpful. Though spirit is also used as a generic term to describe ghosts who have yet to be identified as belonging to the previous subcategories. In addition to these broader categories, there exists a litany of subclasses and variations among ghosts. Indeed, ghosts are the most diverse and various of all mythical creatures. Usually defined by their abilities or purpose, the sheer quantity of differences among ghosts is testament to how ancient and ubiquitous this myth is. The ghost permeates many aspects of popular culture and culture throughout history. This creature is an important part of human belief systems. From books to films and video games, the ghost makes an appearance in almost every work of fiction, both as an obstruction or a boon, and, on some occasions, as a protagonist. The most popular depiction is found in horror media, where the ghost is an unstoppable creature with unknowable malicious intent. The ghost lends itself well to this type of depiction, as its incorporeal nature makes it difficult to deal with using brute force alone, requiring luck and belief to defeat. Second to horror stories, we find ghosts taking on the role of helpful or powerful beings that aid protagonists in some manner, usually by giving them information. But every so often we do see help coming in the form of harm to antagonists within stories, most famously in The Lord of the Rings, where the dead men of Dunharrow fight to save the city of Minas Tirith. Sometimes the nature of the ghost makes it as alluring as the modern vampire, and romance stories are concocted around the plot of having an ultimately unattainable supernatural lover. Many aspects of our myths and personal philosophies also include the concept of a ghost, although it is not in the form of some earthbound entity. Rather, it is the concept of a spirit or soul, some animating force that is the essence of one's being. In media, this is usually the incorporeal yet still living form someone may take to accomplish a goal, while in culture we assume it to be the root of our minds, or sometimes literally the soul. 
And finally, we cannot forget one of the most famous celebrations, Halloween. On the 31st of October, many countries hold a festival during All Hallows' Eve, a pagan celebration held during a night where the veil between our world and that of the spirit world is said to be the thinnest. People will dress up as various representations of these spirits to ease their passing into the afterlife. And even though Christian and modern influences have changed a lot of the engagement of this holiday, it is nevertheless remembered as a day where all manner of ghostly activity is afoot. Pinpointing the origin of the ghost myth is particularly difficult. The reason for this lies in the ubiquity of ghosts in culture. This is further compounded by the fact that untethered animating forces, namely spirits, are so essential to human belief systems that identifying the seminal concept takes us into prehistoric speculation. However, anthropologists and theologians have not let this rather difficult barrier deter them from attempting to identify what factors might create this creature in the minds of people. Oftentimes, the inciting event is speculated to be a series of observations made by prehistoric man. During winter, upon seeing condensation rising from an open wound of a friend or prey item that is on the verge of death, they might mistake this condensation for some essential vitalizing essence escaping the mortally wounded. This is partially related to the most commonly speculated origin, in that ancient people would generally believe that the condensation of breath during winter was evidence of a spirit. Indeed, the word spirit finds its origins in Latin, where it literally means breath, and in ancient Greece, the same is true of the word pneuma. Although, these examples only account for climates that experience a cold winter, Australian, as well as Central African and American cultures have equally robust belief systems without the climate required to produce similar observations as in Europe. Thus, we look to something more essential to human culture, intoxicants. The consumption of various poisons to induce an altered state of mind is found throughout the world, and in the hot climates of Australia, Africa and Central America, these take the form of far more potent substances such as frog and plant poisons as opposed to the more common ethanol. Often these substances will induce visual and auditory hallucinations that these cultures simply refer to as ghosts or spirits. When we consider the various migration theories of humanity placing our origin in sub-Saharan Africa, it is not too much of a stretch to imagine that we owe our global conception of spirits and ghosts to our ancient ancestors who needed to describe their experiences with hallucinogenic substances. This hypothesis, it should be mentioned, is based entirely on extrapolated reasoning and has no real evidence to carry it, but it is fascinating for the romantic implications. Namely, how all human culture, despite our differences, is so quintessentially connected by such a singular belief. Resolving the differences between reality and the ghost myth is particularly challenging. The main reason for this is that ghosts and spirits, etc., are usually considered objects of faith, which imbues them with properties that are not necessarily grounded in reality particularly considering the properties such an entity possesses. However, there is still room to speculate as to the nature of ghosts as they relate to the real world and perhaps reconcile their nature with that which is possible. Western science and medicine is often criticized for being myopic in its almost exclusively reductionist approach to objects of knowledge. This, in turn, leads to gaps in our ability to explain phenomena such as the seemingly irrational world of atoms giving rise to the rational world we live in, this most famous conundrum led to the development of special and general relativity. Although we understand that difference of scale might bring about this variation, we don't often acknowledge that this might also apply to larger objects in the world, such as the brain. The brain is often considered the seat of consciousness, the home of what essentially makes us who we are. From this organ arises our thoughts and emotions, and yet, despite understanding how such a thing functions on a basic level, we nevertheless struggle to explain its more transcendent properties, namely its ability to produce the mind. Though how might the brain create something so utterly alien to our present understanding of physics? Often, the brain's ability to render the mind is ascribed to its similarity to computational devices, since the brain is a network of structures that very closely resembles hyperthreaded NAND gates and transistors. Indeed, much of the terminology invented for discussing the function of computers is eminently transferable to the brain. However, 
The problem with this analogy is that modern computers show no signs of the autonomous activity that is usually associated with the mind. Simply supplying energy to a microprocessor does not make it perform computational operations, whereas a brain does so regardless. And as a result, computers are presently incapable of producing a mind and spirit. So we must look elsewhere and invoke hypothetical concepts to explain how the mind and consequently ghosts might potentially be created. Metamaterials are a relatively recent development and possess properties that, when translated to the brain, may explain the creation and formation of ghosts and spirits. Simply put, metamaterials consist of nanostructures placed in composite arrays. The resulting structure is capable of influencing various forms of wave, such as light and sound, despite the fact that the structures themselves are smaller than the waves they are influencing, and thus should not be able to interact with the waves at all. Considering the complicated structure of the brain, it might not be unreasonable to suggest that its structure is interacting with some all-encompassing ether, and thus produce what we experience as the mind. Ghosts would then be born from a semi-permanent impression left on this ether, or perhaps the brain is simply capable of generating this ether, leaving residue in the form of a ghost. The implications of these concepts would mean that even the still living are capable of producing ghosts, should they for some reason leave an impression on the ether or leave some particularly strong residue. Of course, with any kind of inquiry into the physical world, we want to avoid creating new and radical forms of matter, such as the aforementioned mind ether, and it goes without saying that imaginative speculation could hardly get more fanciful than this. Ultimately, the complexity of this subject, and the various factors believed to be involved, means that this endeavor is far beyond the might of a simple video. And as such, we would very much like to hear your own ideas, dear viewer, of how ghosts may function and come to be. Though we may never understand the nature of the human soul, we can be certain that it is nevertheless an important and vital aspect of our beliefs and our cultures.